Am I the a-hole for forcing my pregnant wife to be taken care of by her brother-in-law while I go on a trip? Original post. So first off, my wife and I are not in the best place right now. This is in part due to her decision to be a surrogate for sister and brother-in-law. I did not agree with this. The current issue is not about that, though it is related. I was recently promoted, and with a promotion, me and my family are invited on a retreat. It is an all-expenses-paid trip. I told my wife about the trip, and she was really excited about it, and so are our kids. My wife brought up the trip with her doctor, though, and was told that since she is expecting twins, she should not fly after 20 weeks. She will be 24 weeks by the time of the trip, and there is no way for us to go besides flying. The doctor said with how she is progressing, there is a chance she might have to be put in bed rest by then as well. Because of that, my wife doesn't want me to go either, since she says she'll need me here to take care of her. I would be able to, since I have the option to work from home. I, however, still want to go on a trip, and so do our kids. So my thinking is that, since the baby is theirs, my sister-in-law and her husband should have to be the ones to take care of my wife. I talked to them about this idea and it was not well received, because my sister-in-law and her husband do not live close by. So one of them would have to come and stay here to take care of her, which means one of them would have to take a week off from work. They apparently are scrambling to save every penny they can since they spent all their savings getting my wife pregnant, and we're not expecting twins. My sister-in-law said if I was really going to abandon my pregnant wife, they would figure it out and take care of her. However, because of the money issue, it means her husband would be the one taking care of my wife since my sister-in-law makes more money than him. It would be very detrimental to them if she took a week off, but they could make do without his paycheck if they had to. To me, it seems like a good enough solution, but wife is upset because she says I'm putting her in the uncomfortable position of being taken care of by her brother-in-law when she's in a vulnerable state. Of course, nobody's thinking he's going to do anything to her. She is just uncomfortable because he's a man, and she would rather he not look after her. Now for the top comments before reading the mini-update. The issue is precisely that she is surrogating against your wishes. What was the decision-making process you went through? In situations like this, there is no compromise. One wins. But it's how you got there. That she wants you and the kids to change plans because of this suggests she won more by default than process. This was a decision that profoundly affects all of you, especially since you've been through this with your own and no pregnancy. No, her choice, her consequence. Go and enjoy yourself, and when you get back, get into marital therapy. That she doesn't see all of this suggests this one doesn't have a long shelf life otherwise. There wasn't any decision-making process that I was a part of. I was told it was none of my business. Perfect. Then taking care of her now is none of your business. Take your kids and enjoy your trip. And when you get back, rethink your whole marriage. Not a hole. Your wife agreed to be a surrogate without you being on board with the idea? Frankly, you have much bigger problems to face than whether to go on this trip. I know. Like I said, things aren't great right now to begin with. Not the a-hole. I'm sorry she just did that without even a discussion. As a female, a mom and a partner, this is awful to me. It also really bothers me that these people are like, Whoa, we have to take care of the person carrying our babies. So what are they gonna do when the babies are here? Drop them with your wife? Leave them with a nanny all the time? Hang on, this isn't just about one trip. If she might need to be put on bed rest at 24 weeks, doesn't that leave a whole 16 weeks that she's going to need a carer? And they think you should be doing that? Yeah, time for the wife to go live with a sister and brother-in-law. What a mess. Now for the mini update. I go offline for a bit to take care of some things and I come back to all these comments. Thank you all for helping not feel so crazy or, I don't know, alone in this? I do realize now that this is the end of the road for us. I probably should have realized that sooner. So right now, I'm just going to start preparing for that and try to make this process as easy as possible for our kids. Next story. Am I the a-hole for dumping my girlfriend who left her husband for me? I was in a friends with benefit relationship with a woman. I didn't know that she was married. She told me that they were separated. I started catching feelings for her and I confessed that I want to build a future with her. And she came next day to my doorstep and told me that she wants to move in with me as her ex is making her divorce difficult. I was like, sure first few weeks were good. She would clean and cook for me. Then she started messing with my things, telling me where to put my keys, how I go out whenever I want, etc. She became irritating and eggy, so I lost feelings for her and kicked her out. She started begging me to give her another chance, that she will not bother me and how she left her husband for me. Turns out they were not separated. She was cheating on that poor sod with me. I told her to kick rocks and never contact me again. She's now spreading rumor that I love bombed her, 
that I somehow manipulated her into cheating with me. Her husband is not letting her get back and is going for full custody and grounds for abandonment. I don't blame him, but I do think he's overreacting, although it's none of my business. She has been harassing me in social media, blaming me for stringing her along and using her for fun. I used her for fun, as much as she used me the same. I didn't love bomb her. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. You may want to make a post about how it really went down. Public embarrassment can be a way to get her to stop harassing you. I agree. At least respond with, If I had known you were still married, I never would have gone out with you or slept with you. Then block her on all platforms. Yep, tell the story that she told you she was separated and going through a divorce. In fact, post your Reddit post to her social media. Then block. I don't blame him, but I do think he's overreacting, although it's none of my business. She's spreading lies about you in social media after deceiving you as well as her husband. Yet you think her husband is someone who overreacts? Trust me, if you think you've seen the worst of her in just a short period of time, then you should take into account how much he has had to deal with after being married for a while and having kids with her. You were probably just the last straw. Consider setting the record straight on social media, as her lies could affect you negatively. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole, but a bit crappy. She literally ditched her kids to move in with this random guy. That's abandonment. Him calling the husband filing for custody and grounds for abandonment overreacting is horrible. No, he didn't know. He does now. No, he didn't ask her to leave her kids. But saying it's overreactive is crappy. It's not overreaction. It's the definition of abandonment. Leaving your kids for nearly a month to move in with your new boyfriend is abandonment. She was cheating on her husband with you and used you when she was kicked out by her husband. Why would you give a chance to a cheater? If she did that to her husband, she will probably do the same to you. She even lied to you about her relationship with her husband. She only wants to get back together with you because she needs a place to stay. Just block her and go no contact with her. She is a troubled person and it's not your responsibility. Just learn your lesson and avoid making the same mistake in the future. Next story. Am I the a-hole for divorcing my wife after she got an abortion? My 27 male and wife 27 female have been together for four and a half years and married for two. We've discussed kids before marriage and both agreed that we wanted kids. A couple weeks after we got married, we started trying for a baby and she got pregnant but was having doubts about kids at a time. We discussed it a bit and she said she didn't feel ready yet. I didn't push back and let her make the decision since she's the one who's pregnant. Three weeks ago, she got pregnant again. I was excited but she still wasn't sure. She said she wanted to wait a little longer, and I tried asking her for a timeline, but she just said when she feels ready, she'd let me know. I asked her if she still wants kids at all, and she gave me a non-answer where she said she doesn't know if she wants kids anymore and wouldn't elaborate. I didn't want to pressure her to do anything, but I told her that I want to have kids and that I need to rethink our relationship if this is the route she wants to go. She got the procedure and I started the divorce proceedings a few weeks later. Some of our mutuals are saying I was wrong to separate because of this, and she's called me a few times sobbing. I really want to be with her, but having kids and starting a family is really important to me, and it feels like she's been too unsure and unclear with what she wants, and has been stringing me along in the process. Edit? Sorry, I should have clarified that the second time she got pregnant, we weren't actively trying because she hadn't said she's ready after the first termination. Now for the top comments. Yeah, definitely not the a-hole. This relationship ain't gonna work out. You both want different things. Just end it and move on and find someone that actually does want what you want. Her not wanting kids is okay, but what's not okay is her stringing you along with non-answers and awful communications just to keep you with her. Exactly. Opie didn't force his will on her and didn't judge the choice to terminate the pregnancy. But when she couldn't be clear on a timeline, failed to communicate in addition to having the second termination, Opie is right to think their future plans may not be aligned. Reddit has seen plenty of women who have been strung along until it's too late to have babies. Here, he is willing to do something about it. She has the right to terminate, he has the right to leave as a result. Not the a-hole. It seems she doesn't want kids but wanted to keep you. No, you're not the a-hole. Wanting kids or not is a fundamental incompatibility. Obviously, you aren't compatible. How many terminations do your friends expect you to go through? Are you not allowed to feel betrayed that you entered a marriage assuming you shared common goals only to find out she lied? I question the mindset of a woman who actively tries to get pregnant and then changes her mind twice. I think it's a good thing not to have kids with someone like that. This isn't normal behavior. You're doing the right thing, not the a-hole. A friend of mine from school was adopted as a kid. It turns out his bio father was a successful lawyer slash judge in California. His bio mom was a popular artist. They are both still married to each other. 
but they had had three kids and then decided four was too many and gave him up for adoption. Then they had another and decided to keep it. So basically, it was just him they didn't want. Initially, this made him feel like crap. But then he met his bio siblings and they were all like, thank your lucky stars you got out of this family. It was a crazy circus. No kid wants to be unwanted. It's like you said, anyone with a wife's mindset should it be a parent. Something is off about her. At least she realizes it and didn't parent a kid. Last story. Would I be the a-hole if I broke up with my boyfriend for not proposing? So I, female 27, have been with my boyfriend, male 25, for three years next month. He is the best boyfriend I've ever had. And this is the best and healthiest relationship I've ever had with anyone. I haven't had many relationships, but this is by far the best one. There are so many things I love about him, and I know that he loves me just as much if not more. When we first started dating, I told him that I was dating to marry. I know exactly what I want, and I have a timeline for it. I wanted to be married for a little while before I have kids, and I want to have kids no later than 35 years old. I want this for a multitude of reasons, not the least of which is avoiding high-risk pregnancy. I've experienced personal loss, my four-month-old baby sister due to genetic complications that were likely associated with my mother's geriatric pregnancy. Pregnancies are considered geriatric and higher risk once the woman is 34 or older. We've had many talks about this throughout the years, as this is something that is important to me, and he knows that. All that being said, I am turning 28 this year, he's 26 this month. Tom is flying and I feel like I'll be 30 next week. I really don't want to be his or anyone's girlfriend for more than four or five years. And as we approach our third year and move towards our fourth year, I would really like to be engaged pretty soon. He said that he wants to marry me, but it's always someday or not anytime soon. When I ask him what he sees for us in the next year or two, he says that he wants us to be living together, which gives me hope because he knows that I have no interest in living with a significant other unless we are at least engaged. But at the same time, he also wants to move out of his parents' house and live on his own for a while before we actually live together. I totally respect the fact that he may not be at a point in his life where he is ready to take the next step of engagement and I don't want to push him or give him an ultimatum. However, I do want to do what's best for myself at the end of the day, no matter how much I love him and I love our relationship. I love him and I know that us breaking up would destroy him, but at the same time, I don't want to put my own life on hold and my health at risk in the future solely to spare his feelings. I'm torn on what to do and a big part of me feels like I would be a gigantic a-hole for this. And so, I ask for the court of public credit opinion. Would I be the a-hole for breaking up with him if we're not engaged within the next year? I would be more than happy to get back with him if we did break up and he decided he wanted to get married. I love him and I want to be with him, but I also want to do what is in my own best interest for my future. Edit? Okay, I didn't think this would get so much attention and I haven't even read all the comments. And I just want to clear a few things up. 1. I'm not super rigid in this timeline. I know life happens the way it's gonna happen regardless of what we plan. The only thing I'm the least willing to compromise on is when I have kids. Among the health risks, I also just don't want to be pushing 40 and pushing out a baby for the first time. And I want at least two kids. 2. Some of you guys are mean and sad a-holes, but a lot of you have given great advice and mirrored a lot of thoughts I was already having. I think I'm going to wait until our anniversary before I have yet another talk with him about not just what I want, but what he wants and when he wants it. He's not irresponsible at all, but he has the freedom and safety net, his parents, to allow him the freedom to try things and mess up, etc. I do not. He's also not on clock like I am. 3. I'm not pressuring him. I'm not manipulating him. We wouldn't be together if that were the case. He's not stupid and does not want to tolerate that nonsense from anyone including me, and I would never. I have too much love and respect, and frankly, I'm just not a piece of turd. 4. I most certainly have communicated everything in this pose to him, clearly and in full. He knows what I want and I have an idea of what he wants. I've always made sure to make all my intentions clear with him, because I do have a tendency to expect people close to me to just know or pick upon hints and things and I just really didn't want that frustration and confusion in my relationship. You wouldn't be the a-hole for expressing your need for a clear plan in marriage. Open communication is key. If your priorities don't align, it's okay to consider your own well-being. I agree. And also, what's his plan? What is the reasoning for still living at home? Is he working? Saving money toward his future with you? If he contributes to the household monetarily and or chores wise, that's a good sign that he's acting like an adult. Is he just there for a free ride and spending his money in a way that doesn't build toward his future with you? Like, what's his plan? Because him saying someday, not anytime soon feels like he doesn't have a plan. 
maybe doesn't take your timeline seriously, it is ultimately stringing you along for the benefits. If it's staying with his parents but saving a significant amount of money for the future, then I think it is okay. If his income is plain money, that's a really bad sign. Delayed gratification is something to look for in a long-term partner. The same for things like laundry. Is his mom doing all of the laundry or is he doing his own? Does he know how to cook and clean? 